Hey everybody, Mean Joe with Bossy USA. Welcome to the next installment of the Bossy USA Beginner Build Series. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and get the right wing finished up and show you how to do everything. So that way when you go to build your left wing, you'll understand how everything works and you'll be ready to go. So here we go. Thanks for watching and happy building. So the next step says to lay out the casing of the knee rod over the rib so that the outer end lines up with the notch. Uh, it also says that you can use a helper with marking these and by all means if you have somebody available to help go ahead and make use of that but you really can do this by yourself. What you're going to do here is the knee rod casing is going to extend past the end of this about a half of an inch. So what I would do, because you're going to have obviously plenty of extra knee rod when you're done making this, I would set this right in the corner between the rib and the trailing edge of the aileron and then that way you can get your bend correctly. If, if you're by yourself you'll be just fine. Um, you can see here on the plans that it's actually drawn out where the knee rod casing is supposed to be run through. So this will help you in the end. You can just lay it right here into the corner like that then all you have to do is line it up and mark where you want to drill your holes I would use consistent I would stay above it or below it whichever you decide to do I would keep consistent all the way through In my case I'm marking it above all of the ribs and those will be my hole locations just like that so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to drill my holes. Now what I would do is if you have the extended drill bits, this will make this a lot easier. These are actually available on BossUSA.com. You'll be able to get a better angle using these than you would a traditional small drill bit because of the angle that you're going to have to hold your drill at. I would suggest picking these up even if you don't get the whole set. Um, I would at least get a couple of sizes to, so that you have them available to use. It's going to make this process a lot simpler to get those hole drill. So all you do is you make, make sure you got your mark. And I'm, in my case, going to come down about halfway through. Make sure you go ahead and hang on to the rib so that when you drill through that you don't break the rib. And then just drill the holes in the locations that you mark. You're going to want to keep a little bit of an angle and you can see because I used consistent markings I went above. The angle kind of is already there so it takes the angle of the shape of the knee rod when I put it through. So you'll want to kind of follow that angle with your drill so that way your knee rod will go through simple. So you want to have just a little bit of an angle and what I'm doing is I'm just using the mark I made as a reference to about what angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. It'll just help you get the knee rod in place later. Now what I actually did is I actually bumped this rib with my drill. So I'm going to put a little thin along this crack I made here to shore that up so it's nice and solid. Not a big thing. Just make sure you're paying attention when you do this. All it takes is a little bit of thin CA and that'll be good as new. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do that now so I don't forget to come back by here in a little bit and do it. So find your crack. And run just a little bit of thin CA right down the crack. And that'll solidify up nicely and you'll never even know there was a crack there. And in that, in that case, just so you're aware, it'll actually be stronger now at that spot where you put that thin CA than it was before you put the crack in it. Which is an interesting effect. So the next step is going to be to run your knee rod casing through. And again, you're going to want to be very careful that you uh, hang on to your bits. Now I will show you this. This is something that I, I wanted to point out. I didn't do this on this portion because it's not critical, but this is just a little tip. If you look here, I actually have a little blowout around these holes on the back side where I drilled them. So I will teach you a quick tip about that. 
to keep that from happening, if it's going to be in an obvious area, for me, this is going to be on the inside of the wing, so it's really not going to matter. So I'll run a little bit of sandpaper on here just to knock off the extra wood. But if you don't want that to happen, what you can do is you can take a block of wood. And what I would suggest for something like that, kind of a, uh, a little bit harder of a wood than the balsa that you're working with. And I would just take that block of wood and stick it right in behind where you're going to be drilling. So for me, what I could have done was I could have taken this block of wood and put it right in behind the area where I'm going to be drilling and hold it up there nice and firm. And then when I drill through this into the block, that'll prevent at least some of the blowout around the hole when you drill it. Again, for this application on the inside of the wing, it's not going to be critical that I don't have that on there, but if you're ever drilling holes through any kind of wood, that will help you prevent blowout on the back side. That's just a little extra added quick tip. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my nye rod casing. Again, you're going to want to make sure you hang on to your ribs so that you don't crack them during this process. And you're basically just going to feed the nye rod casing up through the holes that you drilled. If you followed the angle like I suggested, it should go in there actually very easily. Be careful making this turn here. This turn is a little tight. And you want to line that up so it's going to be about a half inch past the notch. Then the next step is going to be to simply go through and put a little dab of CA all the way through just to make sure that this is solidified in place. Again, you want to make sure before you glue it that you've got enough left over at the end to at least get a half inch past the bottom edge of your notch. And if you have that, then you're good to go. You can go ahead through and CA each point where it passes through and you'll be good to go to move on to the next step. I did want to point out what I did with this when I used the CA I just used a little bit of thick and then I followed it right up with some kicker at each one of these points so that thing is going to be good and solid and it's not going to go anywhere it'll stay right where you put it you could use thin I wouldn't use thin for this step because thin will run right off of the plastic and it doesn't do you any good to have it really wick to the wood in this step all you're really doing is solidifying the plastic to the wood and thick would be best for that application. And then just follow that up with a little bit of kicker and this part will be good to go. So the next step is going to be to cut and place your quarter by quarter inch square upper spar. The simplest way to do that is to line it up with the end. Go ahead and put it right down in the notch. Line it up with the end. If you're not perfectly square at this end, at the at the outside end, that's fine. You can always sand that later, but might as well go ahead and try to get it lined up as good as you can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a one, two, three block down on the end board end and bring the mark up from the bottom lower spar and mark my upper spar. This way they match. And I will cut that off right there where my mark is and we can move on to the next step. So I did want to get this glued in here. I did want to point out that I used thin CA on this part to glue the upper spar in place. So that way it has a chance to wick into the wood. And I'm not going to use kicker on this step. I'm just going to let that glue wick right into that wood to make sure that those joints between the ribs are nice and solid. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to extend the line along the outside edge of your aileron past the wing block so that you can see it. That's basically what you're doing here. So what I would do is I would unpin my plans, just a couple of pins, set those aside, roll up my wax paper, just so enough so it's out of the way. And then all you're gonna do is extend the line from the wing tip block down to the edge of the aileron. What this is going to do, this is going to give you a good reference point to be able to make your cut when you cut your aileron to size. So all I'm doing is I've got this folded back and I'm going to extend this line from the wing block all the way down 
to the edge of the plans. So that way when you roll, when you lay your aileron stock down there to make your cuts, the lines down pass far enough so you can see where you're going to make your cuts. That's the reason why you're doing the extending of the line. So I'll go ahead now and I'll repin this back down. And as you can see here, the bevel has already been cut on this piece of aileron stock for you. The bevel is going to face down. So when you set this up, you're going to want to make sure that you lay it on your plans with the bevel end facing down. And here you can see why we extended that line pass. So now you've got a reference point that you can mark each end of the aileron and you're not going to be going in blind. So now what you can do is you can go ahead and line up your aileron stock. Remember you're going to keep a little bit of gap here with this rib. Just just follow the plans. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there. And make your marks on your aileron stock down here. Since you've made that mark, all you've got to do then is lay your straight edge down. Just like that. And make your mark. What I would do for sure on this one is one of the things we talked about in the very first video. You want to cut this to the outside of this line as close to the line as you can get but cut to the outside of it just to give yourself a little bit more material so that when you get ready to shape your wingtip block you can line everything up and sand it flat so it makes a nice good transition between the the um, wing block here and the end of the aileron so now you've got your mark made you can go ahead and cut your aileron stock to size Okay, so the next step is going to be to place the three-quarter inch by three-quarter inch, one-eighth inch plywood scrap that you cut. Now, I will tell you, you have to pay attention here because this is the top of your aileron stock as the plan is built. So as the plan is built, the top is the top and the bottom is the bottom. This piece of scrap will go on the bottom. So what you have to do is slide your aileron stock back just enough, making sure you keep it lined up with your plans so that you can see your lines where your block will go. This is your, where your control horn will attach to. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm still lined up with my plans everywhere and I'm going to line up my scrap so that I can make my marks. So what you have to do is I'm going to make my mark right here just a little mark on both sides and then what I'll do is I'll carry that line around to the other side because you actually have to flip the aileron over and cut your notch for your plywood block on the bottom side remember that that's this is the top of the aileron you'll have to flip it over to place this block in the correct place. All I'm going to do is carry these lines up and make my marks so that I can adjust for where this block goes. And then you'll just you'll waller this out. I'll get this up here so you can see it better. I have made my two marks. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to carry those two marks up so that I get the proper placement for my hardwood block where my control horn goes, or I should say my plywood block. Just remember that the top side that facing up as you build your plane is going to be the top side of the wing. So you want to put your block on the bottom side. So now that I've got my marks made on the bottom edge of my aileron, checking this with my block that I made, I also double checked that that lines up where the nye rod comes out and we'll be able to attach where the control horn goes. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and whittle this out about an eighth inch deep until that I get it almost perfectly level and then what I can do is sand off any extra. I would try to get this as well fit as you can without sanding too much on the aileron because anything you sand in the aileron here you're going to have to make sure that you carry out throughout the whole length of the aileron in both directions it's easier just to get it to fit right as you cut this out so what I'll do is I'll actually take my eighth inch piece of ply and I'll just lay it up there so it's level I can feel it with my finger and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a little press and giving it that little press 
it puts a nice little divot for me to follow the eighth inch all the way in. So all I did was place my piece of ply along where it's got to go, just like this, and then I just pressed it into the balsa a little bit, and that gives me the mark that I need to follow. So why I'm showing you guys how to do this with the mark, I wanted to point out a little safety tip. So anytime you're going to use an X-Acto knife like this to make a notch like this, you don't want to put your hand in behind it and do it like this because if you slip through with the knife, you're going to cut yourself in the hand. Okay, so what I would do is I would lay this down on my bench and take out just a little bit at a time. You don't go right to your mark. Remember we talked about that earlier. You just want to cut a little bit out at a time. Making sure you keep your hands clear and go ahead and just work that wood out of there until you've got the notch for your eighth inch plywood. So now you can see I've got my notch all made so that my quarter by quarter by one eighth inch plywood slides right into it. And I can sand that if I need to, but we're going to go ahead and glue that right into place. So now that you have your block all installed on your aileron, the next step is going to be to cut the guts, gussets that go in these corners. There's one here and there's one at the edge of the main wing here. So all you need to do is take your scrap wood, and if you want to, it's not imperative, but if you want to, you can measure this distance here to get the right length if you want. Again, you don't have to. We do have laser cut gussets available on BossUSA.com. If you want to save time, if you just want to go ahead and cut them yourself, it's really no big deal. This is one inch here. And you can measure this one as well. That's going to be about 5 eighths. So you can measure those from a corner of a piece of scrap balsa you have and then just go ahead and cut them yourself. Or again, like I said, if you don't want to, if you want to save your scrap and you have the means, you can go ahead and pick up some laser cut gussets from BalsaUSA.com and those will work great save you a little bit of time. So just to explain how I cut the gussets real quick, because I went ahead, I didn't have any of our laser cut gussets on hand actually, so I thought that was kind of funny, but I don't have any more here. All I did was measure out the one inch and then do a 45 degree angle and measure out the 5 eighths of an inch and do a 45 degree angle and those will fit in there perfectly. As you can see here, they're all good to go. I put those in with a little bit of thin CA so it would work down in there and we're moving on to the next spot. Okay, so the next step is going to be to cut to length the top trailing edge sheet. This is going to be from the same 3 seconds by 1 and 3 eighths inch sheet that you had earlier. You're going to lay it down on your plans. You're going to make your mark and what I would do is I would use a square, or again, a one, two, three block to make sure that you're square and level on the ends and then make your mark and cut your stop. Now, to glue this in and to get this right, you're probably going to have to move your pens. Because remember, we had the bottom top, or the bottom sheeting uh, pinned down here. So what I've done here is I've moved my pens up on the ribs to be able to hold this flat to my work surface so they don't build any warp into my trailing edge. Just move your pins up here, make sure they're nice and secure, and you, you'll stay flat to your workbench so that way you make sure you don't put any undue uh, warp in your uh, trailing edge. So get that all lined up like it needs to be. Again, I'm just using a 1-2-3 one, three, one, three block on the ends to make sure that I'm square all the way down. And I'll go ahead and glue this uh, top trailing edge in place. So now the next step is going to be to cut and place your top leading edge, your leading edge top sheeting. So we're, same thing as we did before, you're going to want to line this up with a 1-2-3 block or a square on the end to make sure you keep everything square. Bring it all the way down to the notches in your ribs, all the way down, and then make your mark. So what I'll do on this 
is I will mark it just a little bit longer than what I need, like maybe an eighth of an inch. So that way, if I have any issues when I get ready to put the wings together, I've got a little bit of extra material. I can always sand that off flush when I get done. That makes sure we fit good. I did the same thing to the bottom leading edge sheeting. It's a little bit longer than what the spars are, but that's okay because we can sand that flush later if we need to. The biggest reason to do that is because I just want to make sure we don't cut it too short. If we cut it too short, then we're going to be in big trouble with that. It is fixable, but it's a whole lot easier just to cut it a little bit long. And I would say even a 30 seconds is just long enough, like maybe one line width and then cut to the outside of the line. That gives you just a little bit of extra material down there to work with. So now that we have our top leading edge sheeting cut, you're going to want to make sure you take out all the pins so that you don't have those trapped between the sheets and line everything up just like it's going to look when you get it done make sure your fit is good double and triple check everything to make sure you're all good to go and then what you're going to do is you're going to start by laying a bead of thick CA right down the spar and a little bit onto each rib all the way down don't get too carried away with this step because you want to make sure that you can get everything set before the glue sets. This is where an extra set of hands will help you lay this down and keep it f flat and along the edge of the ribs because this sheet is going to need to form to the sheet or this sheet is going to need to form to the shape of the ribs as we move it down. So just start slow get maybe another person to come and help you hold it down and I'll take some pictures of that and that way it'd be all good to go now what I would suggest doing with this is I would put thick CA on here and then what I would do is if you've got somebody to help you I would spray the underneath side of this with some kicker and when I put it down as long as I've got somebody to help me get it down all the way you can put it in place and roll it around and it'll set relatively quickly you just want to make sure that you're able to get it all the way down all the way across if you're not comfortable with the CA kicker all you need to do is put a little bit of thick on there and hold it down a little bit at a time and let it set Shouldn't take more than a couple of seconds for it to tack. And then move your way down to the rest of the ribs. What you can also do once you get this done is you can also come back through. Once you get it unpinned and up off your plans, you can actually take a Boss USA pipette and work glue in under here. And that's probably what I'll do anyways, is I'll run my pipette up in here and put some thin along each one of the ribs on the inside to make sure it's good and secure all the way down. That thin will wick into that wood really good and it should be uh, it should form real good to your ribs. So now what you're going to do is take the wing tip block you're going to lay it right up against the end of your last rib and you're going to mark this shape right onto the block. This will be the shape that you need to make your wing tip just like that so once you have your marks on there you can go ahead and carve this out however you want to do it is fine carve this right out and then what you will do once you get that done is you'll go through and shape the wing sanding around it to make it match up with the wing on the plane so I used my wing rib on the end to get my basic shape of my uh, wing tip. What I've also done is I've went ahead and got the shape that I like on the wing tip versus where I'm at with the plans. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show you a quick tip to keep the wing symmetrical on both sides. What you can do is go ahead and take your other wing tip block, lay your block that you've got the way you want it 
on the top side just like this and then trace around that block so when you get to your other side it would obviously be reversed to this side over here where there's no mark but you can you can shape the wingtip the same and what that will do is that will keep the shape of your wingtip pretty similar to both sides across both sides that's really the only way you're going to get it that close unless you stick 100 percent with the plans that's what you'll do i've actually decided to go with just a little bit of a different shape on the end of my wingtip so for me marking it off now and then carving it out once i have that on there like that will make the wingtip shapes a lot closer so now all you will do is you'll go ahead, <clears throat> glue your wingtip that you've got formed down to the end, and sand everything round and smooth, and you'll be good to go to move on to the next step. So now that you can see that I've got the wingtip on, I've got it carved and sanded to the shape that I like. Um, Everything is all set up. I've given it a nice sanding just to round off the edges a little bit. And I went ahead and cut the nye rod off to length. Um, haven't put it through the hole here yet. That's going to be uh, here in just a couple minutes we'll do that. What I wanted to concentrate on for this is I wanted to show you what they're talking about in step 33. So the actual manual says, with the center line of the wing firmly pinned to your workboard, block up the wingtip one and three eighths inch under the outboard rib. Now, what I'm gonna tell you is this. You're not going to pin the entire wing down to your plans again. That's not gonna work. All you're gonna pin down is this first wing section. So in between this first rib, that's all you're gonna pin down. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pin this down up against your work board here, not the entire wing. So I'll show you what I've done. What I've done is I've gotten my one, two, three block. Okay, it's called one, two, three. We talked about this before because of the dimensions. This side dimension is one inch. So there's one inch of my three, one and three eighths inch inch. So this is a piece of quarter by three eighths inch stock. So now all I have to do is the longer side is the three eighths lay that down on top of my one two three block and then that gives me my inch and three quarters or inch and three eighths that I need to block the wingtip up so then simply what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this shim I'll call it for now right up underneath the last rib on the wingtip end so right about there is where I want it that kind of is on the wing rib and the wing tip as well so it sets flush right there on the end all that's going to do is it's going to block the wing up and that's going to add one and three h inch dihedral to this wing okay so now what you do is you go ahead and pin this first panel down to your plans nice and flat go easy with it so you don't crack anything as you bend this because this actually what you're going to be doing is you're going to be bending this uh, leading edge spar just a little bit it's actually the 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 back leading edge spar so there's the leading edge spar and then there's the back leading edge spar you're going to be bending that just a little bit so that you can get that pinned to your plant so now that i have the this front panel pinned down what i'm going to do is i'm going to sand use my sanding block because i have this pinned flat to the bench i can sand here sand this flush with the end and you can use as you do this you can use a a one two three block or a builder's square to make sure that you're square so that way when i unpin it that will give me my bevel on my inboard edge to match my three or one and three eighths inch dihedral on the wingtip end so that way when i install my dihedral brace later I get the dihedral in the wing that you need for this type of an airplane so basically if you see here this is kind of what you're looking for if you don't understand what dihedral means that's exactly what dihedral means it'll be lower in the center and higher on the wing tips this will give you a lot more stability when you're flying this type of an airframe 
So now you'll see what I do, what I'll do here is I do have this pin down, but I'm gonna make sure I hold it down flat to the board while I do this step. So that way I don't pull my pins out. All you're gonna do is lay your sanding block right up against the edge. And you can actually use the line on your plans to make sure that you're running it straight through. And you're just going to sand the end of that until you get it nice and square. So like I said, you can use either a 1-2-3 block to check it square, or you can use a square, a builder square, and this will give you the dihedral in the wing that you're going to need when you join the wings together later. Okay, so in the plans, the next step it shows is to glue in the two dihedral braces. Now, I'm going to hold off on gluing these in till I get the other wing built so that I can check my fit and make sure that everything is nice and square when I join the two wings together. This is going to be very hard to sand and make the corrections that you're going to need to make if you go ahead and glue these in now. So what I would do is I would hold off on gluing in the two dihedral braces until you've got the other wing panel built and can marry the two together to make sure that they're going to be where you want them. Now I will tell you, make sure that you remember that there are two dihedral braces here. One goes in front of the spar, the rear leading edge spar, and one goes behind the rear leading edge spar. The dihedral brace is the only thing in the wing that really holds the two together. Yeah, you're going to glue them together, but this is where all your support's going to be, right here on these dihedral braces. So you want to make sure that these are correct. Again, one goes in front of the rear leading edge spar. The other one goes behind the rear leading edge spar. Okay, everybody, I think we're going to make that the last step for this part of the build video. What you will do now, now that you have your right wing panel for the most part finished, I've sanded the front edge round, I've sanded everything around the way I want to have it look. You can see here, this is going to be kind of a preference thing. You can sand this all how you like the look of it. You can sand the wingtip how you like the look of the wingtip. You can pretty much make this shape anything you want. Um, got it all sanded and looking pretty. The, now the next thing is is to build the left wing panel. So pretty much the left wing panel is going to go along just exactly like the right wing panel. There's not going to be any difference. It's just going to be flipped. Make sure that when you do this, you pull your right wing plans off of your bench and put down your left wing panel plans. You want to make sure you don't build two right wing panels. So don't forget, this comes off of the bench and you go ahead and put down your left wing panel. So I'm going to leave you guys to do that. Uh, if you have any questions about building the left wing panel, just go ahead and re-watch the right wing panel video. Again, it's going to go together exactly the same way. And we'll come back when we get ready to marry the two wings together and we'll carry on from there. Thanks very much for watching and happy building.